Chapter 14 Mark of the Beast In a view given June 27, 1850, my accompanying angel said, Time is almost finished. Do you reflect the lovely image of Jesus as you should? Then I was pointed to the earth and saw that there would have to be a getting ready among those who have of late embraced the third angel's message. Said the angel, Get ready, get ready, get ready. Ye will have to die a greater death to the world than ye have ever yet died. I saw that there was a great work to do for them and but little time in which to do it. Then I saw that the seven last plagues were soon to be poured out upon those who have no shelter, yet the world regarded them no more than they would so many drops of water that were about to fall. I was then made capable of enduring the awful sight of the seven last plagues, the wrath of God. I saw that his anger was dreadful and terrible, and if he should stretch forth his hand or lift it in anger, the inhabitants of the world would be as though they had never been, or would suffer from incurable sores and withering plagues that would come upon them, and they would find no deliverance but be destroyed by them. Terror seized me, and I fell upon my face before the angel and begged of him to cause the sight to be removed, to hide it from me, for it was too dreadful. Then I realized, as never before, the importance of searching the word of God carefully, to know how to escape the plagues which that word declares shall come on all the ungodly who shall worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in their foreheads or in their hands. It was a great wonder to me that any could transgress the law of God and tread down his holy Sabbath when such awful threatenings and denunciations were against them. The Pope has changed the day of rest from the seventh to the first day. He has thought to change the very commandment that was given to cause man to remember his Creator. He has thought to change the greatest commandment in the Decalogue, and thus make himself equal with God, or even exalt himself above God. The Lord is unchangeable, therefore his law is immutable. But the Pope has exalted himself above God, in seeking to change his immutable precepts of holiness, justice, and goodness. He has trampled underfoot God's sanctified day, and, on his own authority, put in its place one of the six laboring days. The whole nation has followed after the beast, and every week they robbed God of his holy time. The Pope has made a breach in the holy law of God, but I saw that the time had fully come for this breach to be made up by the people of God and the waste places built up. I pleaded before the angel for God to save his people who had gone astray, to save them for his mercy's sake. When the plagues begin to fall, those who continue to break the holy Sabbath will not open their mouths to plead those excuses that they now make to get rid of keeping it. Their mouths will be closed while the plagues are falling, and the great lawgiver is requiring justice of those who have had his holy law in derision and have called it a curse to man, miserable and rickety. When such feel the iron grasp of this law taking hold of them, these expressions will appear before them in living characters, and they will then realize the sin of having that law in derision which the word of God calls holy, just, and good. Then I was pointed to the glory of heaven, to the treasure laid up for the faithful. Everything was lovely and glorious. The angels would sing a lovely song, then they would cease singing and take their crowns from their heads and cast them glittering at the feet of the lovely Jesus, and with melodious voices cry, Glory, Alleluia! I joined with them in their songs of praise and honor to the Lamb, and every time I opened my mouth to praise Him, I felt an unutterable sense of the glory that surrounded me. It was a far more, an exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Said the angel, 
the little remnant who love God and keep His commandments and are faithful to the end will enjoy this glory and ever be in the presence of Jesus and sing with the holy angels. Then my eyes were taken from the glory, and I was pointed to the remnant on the earth. The angel said to them, Will ye shun the seven last plagues? Will ye go to glory and enjoy all that God has prepared for those that love him and are willing to suffer for his sake? If so, ye must die that ye may live. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Ye must have a greater preparation than ye now have, for the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and to destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Sacrifice all to God. Lay all upon his altar, self, property, and all, a living sacrifice. It will take all to enter glory. Lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where no thief can approach or rust corrupt. Ye must be partakers of Christ's sufferings here, if ye would be partakers with him of his glory hereafter. Heaven will be cheap enough if we obtain it through suffering. We must deny self all along the way, die to self daily, let Jesus alone appear, and keep his glory continually in view. I saw that those who of late have embraced the truth would have to know what it is to suffer for Christ's sake, that they would have trials to pass through that would be keen and cutting, in order that they may be purified and fitted through suffering to receive the seal of the living God, pass through the time of trouble, see the King in His beauty, and dwell in the presence of God and of pure holy angels. As I saw what we must be in order to inherit glory, and then saw how much Jesus had suffered to obtain for us so rich an inheritance, I prayed that we might be baptized into Christ's sufferings, that we might not shrink at trials, but bear them with patience and joy, knowing what Jesus had suffered, that we through his poverty and sufferings might be made rich. Said the angel, Deny self, ye must step fast. Some of us have had time to get the truth, and to advance step by step, and every step we have taken has given us strength to take the next. But now time is almost finished, and what we have been years learning they will have to learn in a few months. They will also have much to unlearn and much to learn again. Those who would not receive the mark of the beast in his image when the decree goes forth must have decision now to say nay. We will not regard the institution of the beast.